Right, so we're recording now. Finally, I'd just like to promote the next talk in our Zoom local history talk series, which is up next in two weeks on May the 7th, uh, well, two weeks tomorrow, in fact. I'll be delivering a talk about our collection of 19th century political cartoons for parliamentary elections in Leeds. Tickets still remain, and you can book them via the usual link, uh, ticket source uh, forward slash Leeds Library uh, events. Um, so now on with the talk. I'll just hand over control to Louise and then we'll, uh, we'll begin. Interrupt, Louise. Um, I can't hear you, so I don't can know if anyone now? else. I can hear you now. Yes. yes. I don't know whether anyone else wasn't hearing no. you. <laughs> um, I'd muted myself when Nancy was talking and completely forgot to undo oh, that. Okay. So. Luckily, we were only about four sentences in, so I'll start again. Excellent. Apologies, Thank everyone. Okay, so as Anthony said, we're going to be talking about the Leodis website. What I'm going to do is showcase the new website and tell you all about the functions that it has and where some things have moved to. Um, rather than just have me speak for an hour going on about a website, we're going to mix that in with Anthony, Helen and Josh telling you about some of their favourite parts of the website and some of their favourite images on there. So I'll give you a bit of history first. Now, the Leeds City Council website was built in the late 90s. It launched in 1995, and at the time, the web team was lived in the Central Library. And so we were invited to put a collection of our photographic um, archive onto the site. So we started with about 200 images. They'd been researched by the local family history team, written about, and they went on the site. This proved incredibly popular. So. A couple of years later, that was increased to 2,000 images. And by this point, people had realized the, the historical images of Leeds are incredibly popular and we need to do more than just have a few available on the Leeds City Council website. So a team of librarians with the assistance of Leeds City Council IT got, uh, were able to achieve some lottery funding and build a dedicated photographic archive, uh, the Leodis Archive, which launched in October 2000 to uh, very, very well positively received by everyone. So the majority of the archive is heritage images, every single one of which had to be scanned by a human being. We had no machines back there that would automatically scan those images. We had no digital copies of them. Um, I think the library ones alone at that time were over 30,000 and all of that was done by hand. Every image was researched in the local family history library using our maps, our trade directories, our community history books, all of our resources were used. Um, to do this, we then loaded everything up and that's when Leodis was born and everyone got to kind of view it from home and access it and leave comments. So over the years, we've added to and maintained this site along with managing the orders, people who want to purchase images um, and administering the reproduction rights. Now that's when people want to use one of our photographs on say a calendar or in a newspaper or if they've written a local history book and they want to include a photograph in that. We manage all that side of things. But there became a problem. Um, now, Leodis is over 20 years old we've known for the last five years that the site it was existing on was an unsustainable platform. It had underlining security and accessibility issues, and we knew it was not long for this world. We needed to do something. So I think the final push was when we realized it would not pass a test for the modern security requirements that all websites, especially ones run by local authorities, have to pass. It was on its way out. So we couldn't fix the old one. We had, to re we had to rebuild from scratch completely new website. So what we did first was work out exactly what was needed for a good working archive website. Um, we then had to work out what legal data protection and online security issues we had to work within, at which point we were able to build a site and transfer 
62, over 60,000 images and a lot of comments. Now, the beauty of this is that we were able to do something that we couldn't do 20 years ago, which was make it a lot more user friendly for mobiles and tablets, because so many people now don't have desktop computers or laptops anymore. Now, what I would ask is that you please bear with the new site if you've had any issues. Bear in mind, it's not a fix of the old site. It is a completely new build. We are still locating bugs, things that I know for certain we fixed two months ago are popping up again, but we do have a dedicated Lead City Council IT team behind us who are supporting us and they are fixing everything as it comes along. So please bear with us there. If you've had any issues accessing your existing account and your albums, don't worry, everything is safe. We can still access it. It's just, we've got to help get you through a few steps so that you can access it too. So first I'll tell you a couple more about some of the key features and then we'll hand over to Anthony. So things we've kept, the can you help function. You will find it on the top of the screen. What you're looking at now, what you should be able to see on my screen share is the homepage of Leodis. You'll see at the top, there is a can you help function. These are the pictures where we are stumped. I know it's a shock. We don't know everything about local history. We like to think we do, but we know we don't. Um, but you might, you might look at a photograph and recognize it as the end of your street or a place you went for a walk or somewhere you grew up that has been totally destroyed and rebuilt and that information's lost. Please peruse the can you help section. And if there is anything you can help us with, put it in the comments, let us know because we would really appreciate that. Um, the next section along is latest editions. Leodis is a living website. We are still adding pictures. Our latest collections that are going on now are some that have been taken of leads through the lockdown process. So you'll see all the um, markers on the floor, asking people to space out and queue, that kind of thing, because I tell you now in 20 years time, there's a lot of people who aren't gonna believe what we lived through this year and photographs are a great way to show that. So we're still adding to the site. Latest editions is a good place to look. Um, and then next you'll see something called curated gallery. This is a replacement for what were our, what was our guided tours. Um, we just felt that gallery was a bit more of an accurate terminology as some of them are 20 pictures of the same place and it's not exactly a tour. At the moment we've got two in here. The ones from the old site are being um, uploaded and put on but it's a manual process so it's taken a little bit of time but we are hoping to release more and more galleries and new ones as the weeks go on. If anybody has a suggestion for a gallery, a selection of images that are on the site, please get in touch and email us and let us know because we're always interested in what people want to see on Leodis. With our new site, it's a lot easier for us to respond to what you've asked for and to upload that. So I'm going to invite Anthony to take over in a moment, but four facts just to leave you with. There is, as you can see from the live counter, there's over 67,000 images on Leodis. We have over 40,000 comments from members of the public. On our first day, on the 31st of March this year of the relaunch, we got over 2,500 visitors to the site. Normally we average about five to 6,000 a month. So this was amazing for one day. And uh, it's been overwhelmingly positively received, which is really lovely for us and the people who've worked on it. So I'm going to stop sharing now and invite Anthony to join in and uh, tell us about some of the oldest pictures on the site. Fantastic. Thank you, Louise. And hello again to everyone. Um, I will just share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see. Louise, if you can just, can you confirm that my PowerPoint yes, is? Yep. I can see it. Fantastic. So over the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be focusing on the oldest images on Leodis, or more accurately, I suppose, what I've called traces of old leads on Leodis. So by this, I mean not only the actual oldest images themselves, but also some of those photos that show continuing evidence for buildings and places that predate the modern era. So roughly since the Industrial Revolution, the sort of early to mid 19th century. So I'm gonna take you through some of those images, starting with some from the late 19th century, quickly barreling backwards through the centuries to arrive at the earliest dated image you can find on the Leodis website. My starting point is this man, Alf Mattison. 
a local historian active in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and who was said to have had so much knowledge about the history of Leeds that his colleagues in the city tramways department referred to him fittingly so as old Leeds. As well as a local historian, Mattison was crucially a photographer, and Leodis has a number of his images, almost all dating from the early 20th century, and almost all of which capture significant heritage spaces with their roots in the pre-industrial era. Mattison, in fact, was the author of this short book. Published in 1908, the book's title perfectly captures what I think Mattison was aiming to preserve through his photography, uh, the romance of old Leeds, with old Leeds here meaning prior to the 19th century. So those traces of a Leeds that the apparent progress of the industrial machine had left behind, but which still lingered if you knew where to find them. And many of the buildings and spaces Mattison captured in that book and in his photography have long since changed beyond all recognition. We owe him a huge debt for the vital work he performed recording old leads before it vanished completely. There are many examples of Mattison's images on Leodis, and I'll take you through a few now. Starting with this photo, which probably sums up Mattison's intentions as well as any. <clears throat> this image was taken in about 1906 and shows the corner of Albion Street and Guildford Street. As the Yorkshire Evening Post reported in 1922, the five one-decker shops we can see here were probably around 200 years old when the image was taken, meaning they dated to the early 18th century. Similar images included Mattison's photograph of the old workhouse on Lady Lane, taken just before its demolition in 1936. This building, or at least parts of it, were at least 200 years old when this photo was taken. Also similar is this Mattison image of Rockley Hall Yard on the lower head row, which shows a timber framed building, most likely part of the late 15th century Rockley Hall itself. Mattison was especially keen, as we saw in our first image, on capturing the texture of everyday life for so-called ordinary people through his photography of leisure and social spaces, specifically shops and pubs, many already very old when Mattison photographed them, and most of which have long since disappeared. Here, for example, we see a photo taken in 1907 showing shops on the south side of Lower Hedrow, while here, we see the Cloth Hall Hotel on the northeast side of Infirmary Street, and then here, the Old Crown Inn on Kergate. Then we have the Golden Cock Inn, also on Kergate, and Ye Old Dusty Miller Inn on Swinegate. Finally, we have this wonderful bow-windowed shop on Brigate, which was the last surviving example in Leeds of its kind, and it was demolished in 1922. I also think this rather famous image of the gock, the gock, the cock and bottle in at the junction of the Upper Hedrow and Guildford Street was possibly taken by Mattison, though our Leodis entry doesn't attribute it to him, not, nor anyone else actually for that matter. The photos dated to 1906, which is the same time, same date that a lot of our other Mattison images are dated to, and both the style and the content fit to those other images. So that is a brief, a very brief overview of one way that Leodis captures traces of ancient leads to the magic of photography. But all the images we've seen are just over 100 years old. These are clearly then not the actual oldest images of leads on Leodis. So what is? Well, let's start with this 1866 photograph of Leeds Bridge just prior to its removal and rebuild in 1873. Until starting the research for this talk, I genuinely thought that was the old, actual oldest photograph on Leodis. However, I have since rediscovered, I've completely forgotten about it, but then found it again the other day uh, on, on Leodis, this image, which quite possibly predates the one we've just seen. It's attributed to around 1863. It shows the top end of Brigate with the old corn exchange building at the junction of Lower Hedrow, Upper Hedrow and Brigate itself in the upper centre of the image. Whether this photo is older than the Leeds Bridge one or not, it certainly predates 1869 when the old corn exchange was demolished. Other images of old Leeds from around the same time include this, an 1869 southeast view of number 30 Bridge End showing a barber's shop and pole. This 1867 photograph of the toll house at the junction of North Street and Roundhay Road. 
also from 1867, a very famous photo showing shops on Lower Brigate with the spire of the Holy Trinity Church in the distance. Uh, keep the um, image of the spire of the Trinity Church uh, in, your, in your mind if you can, because that comes up again in, in, a, in a few minutes. And finally, this photo from 1869 showing young boys and men outside St. Margaret's Church in Horsforth. This one is particularly interesting, I think, as it seems to be the oldest image specifically of people on Leodis. While there are clearly people in some of the images we've just seen, they've been captured almost incidentally. So this group shot is the oldest deliberate photo of a social gathering that I've been able to find. Of course, none of the images we've just been discussing are anywhere near to being the actual oldest image on Leodis, which is another way of saying that Leodis does not only include photographs. There is also a significant collection of prints and engravings, many of which predate these photos. I should also add at this point that there is, a, there is an additional large group of theatre and entertainment playbills on the site dating back to the 18th century, but my colleague Helen will be touching on those later. Back to the prints. And speaking of portrayals of people, there's this 1850 sketch of Hunslet Feast with St. Mary's Church in the background. I also really like this um, 1845 drawing of Thomas Green's coffee house on Bar Lane for, from around the same sort of time as the image we've just seen. Um, and similarly, uh, uh, time frame as that one, we also have this 1843 sketch of workers at Marshall's Mill. And this 1841 engraving showing the then newly rebuilt Leeds Parish Church. Speaking of the parish church, in fact, some of the most important and most impressive non-photographic images of old Leeds that you can find on Leodis are a series of watercolour sketches by John Rhodes showing the old parish church prior to and actually during its demolition, such as the two you can see on the slide now. Other now long gone, largely changed, or simply very old buildings captured on other engravings and sketches include such important sites as the one you can see here, the early 19th century courthouse on Park Row, that building's predecessor as the home of law and justice in the town, the early 18th century Moot Hall on Brigat, the legendary Headingley Oak Tree seen here in 1829, this very nice, very evocative 1816 sketch of adult church. And then the Holy Trinity Church, as we were just discussing on Bar Lane, seen here in 1828, before the 1839 hurricane, which fatally damaged the church spire. And if you can remember the image we saw earlier, the spire was very different to the one on this engraving here. And finally, this 1787 print in colour of Harewood Castle. I think that one's very nice, actually. Many of the very oldest images on Leodis, however, capture images of Kirkstall Abbey, perhaps not surprisingly. These include this 1814 hand-coloured glass slide of an engraving showing intact vaulting in the east range of the abbey. This romantic and indeed perhaps romanticised 1808 engraving of a vaulted chamber from the abbey. A 1774 engraving from what was the monk's cemetery across the grounds of the abbey. And finally, this 1723 image showing a perspective of the ruins of the Abbey site almost in its entirety. That 1723 image then brings us within 30 years of our final image, the earliest available visual record of old Leeds on Leodis. And that is this quite extraordinary 1694 sketch from the Corporation Court Books showing a woman, Anne Saul, being led to a ducking stool on Lady Beck in Mabgate after complaints that she was a person of lewd behaviour, a common scold who daily maketh strife and discord among her neighbours. This is, to my mind, not only the oldest image on the site, it's also one of the most important. I say that not only because of its age, though that is clearly a major part of its importance, but as much because of its content. Specifically, I mean that this image so clearly shows drama, people arguing and doing, people engaged in actual action, very unlike the often static, quiet impression we get from some of the other images we've seen, certainly the prospects and engravings from around the same time. The 1694 sketch then not only reveals a specific moment in time, one particular day and incident in the late 17th century, 
It also opens up to us a whole world of empathetic imagination, allowing us to more clearly conceive of our distant ancestors as flesh and blood people, social beings who interacted with their surroundings, moved through space and time, and engaged in dynamic relations across fault lines of class and gender. It is a startling and I think very precious image in the historiography of the city, as well as final proof, if we needed it, for the vital importance of an image archive like Leodis. And that's where I conclude this very brief tour of the old Leeds images on Leodis. I should say, finish by saying that I found almost all of these images using the decade function now highlighted on the advanced search menu, other than the Alf Mattison ones, which I found by searching for his name under keyword one, also now highlighted. So thank you for listening. And I shall now hand you back to Louise. I've stopped my share. So. Okay, can everyone see my screen? It should say Leodis by Leeds Libraries again. Anyone? Yep, we can see it fine. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, so thank you so much, Anthony. That was really good. Uh, it was great to know. I'm going to tell you a couple of other functions now of the new site. Um, for anyone who remembers the top 50 function and dearly misses it, it's one of the ones we decided to change. Um, this is because we found that any time it generated a top 50, it was essentially the top 50 most popular images. So it did not change that frequently. Also, it was very city center heavy. And what we chose to do instead is, if you see at the top here, there is this new pop look function. What it will do is bring you back a random selection of images from the site. And it could be anything. Um, it could just be an epic image of Leeds City Centre. It could be a man on his bicycle. It could be a brick wall or the highways department yard or a sewer. But hey, we would we'd really appreciate um, we appreciate all of our photos and we would really like everybody to view them more. But I have to admit, with a site of over 67,000 images without the pot look function, there's images I would never have known we ever had. Um, I found it highly entertaining over the last few weeks since it launched. So I'm really hoping people do appreciate that one and enjoy it. I will point out this is one of the areas where we're having a slight problem with a bug. Um, we are trying to get that fixed now. If you look at the pot look and it brings you up a load of pictures and you think, oh, I really want to look at this one in particular. For now, if you could right click on the picture and open it on a separate screen, because if you click on that image and then think, well, that was good, I'd like to go back and see the one that was next to it, you will have generated a completely different selection of potluck. We are aware that this is very annoying and we are working to fix this. Okay, so one of the other functions that we've done or that we already had, but that we've increased uh, or tried to improve is the advanced search option. Now on the home page of Leodis, there is a basic search bar, which you can see at the top of the screen. That will always be at the top of the screen. You'll just have to scroll up. But on the right hand side, you will see a link to advanced search. And if you click on that, you get this page. Beauty of advanced search is that you can limit what you've put in. Of, as I said, our site has over 67,000 images. So if you just put in a generic search term, say cobbled street, bicycle, or if you put in something like Cookridge Street or just Cookridge, you'll get everything for Cookridge and everything for Cookridge Street as well. So the advanced search allows you to narrow it down, which means you are gonna get a much more accurate search result. So your top search function shows you that you are looking at photographs. You can narrow down by location. So Chapel Allerton, Morley, Garforth, things like that. You can narrow down by decade. You can enter a particular year. You can even suggest um, a particular collection, like you might want to look at West Yorkshire Archives pictures, or you might want to look at uh, the Civic Trust pictures, or you might just want to look at Leeds Libraries ones. Um, you can also, if you already know an image ID, you can uh, select that. I'm so sorry, my cat just jumped up and tried to join in. Um, and you can also choose at the bottom if you want to search your search results to come back alphabetically or if you want them to come back by date order. So all these will help you narrow down your search options and bring you back a much more accurate search result. 
On the right hand side, as Anthony said, we've got some keyword uh, fields here, which is where you might type in a street name that you're looking for, like Hank on a Lane. You might type in bicycle, lamppost, cobbles. It will bring back every picture that's got those words in it. But we also have this new function, which is the exclude keyword. And this was something I specifically requested because especially when searching for the city centre images, if you type in something like Brigate or the Hedrow or the Corn Exchange or municipal buildings, you get a huge selection of aerial images that come back, which is great in itself. However, if you're looking for something close up, you've essentially just added 100 or so images to your search results that you didn't actually want. So you can exclude things using this box um, and it's been very handy in other ways as well. You can also choose how many records you wish to view at a time. As you will have noticed, if you've played on Leodis, your search results come back three on each line. So obviously our search results, our records to view are all in multiples of three. So I think it's 21 um, and then it goes up and up and up. Now. Before I move on to Helen, I'm going to tell you about our playbills. Now, anyone who used our old Leodis site will have noticed that we had a separate site linked to it for the Leeds playbills. The Leeds playbills collection is over 5,000 images of playbills taken from the historic theatres of Leeds, ones that still exist, like the Grand and the City Varieties, ones that are long gone. Um, if you just want to search playbills, if you go up to this top box directly under advanced search, click on the arrow and select playbills, it will narrow down to just playbills. This way you won't be sorting through photos as well. It's worth pointing out any search term you put in the basic search will search both photographs and playbills. So if you're looking for the area of Robin Hood, you'll get the area and you'll get every playbill that showed a pantomime of Robin Hood. Um, that kind of thing. So yeah, so at the top, you've got photographs, you can narrow that down to playbills, as you can see there. And then down here on the bottom, there's another drop down menu, um, when you can select which theatre you want. So it might be the grand, it might be the princess. And then obviously, you just hit search, and it will bring back all those results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing now so that Helen can take over and tell you all about our amazing playbill selection. Thanks, Lou. I'm just going to try and share my screen. Hopefully this will work. Right, um, hopefully you can see that. Can you see that, Lou? Very good. OK, so yes, hello, everyone. I am Helen. I am the librarian for the Local and Family History Library. And as Lou mentioned, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the playbills that we have in our collection. So previously, as was mentioned, we had a separate Playbills website and you could get to it through the Leodis portal, but it was a very separate collection. And now the integration of it means that you maybe will see Playbills that you have never seen before. They may pop up in your search results um, unexpectedly and you might get a little bit of extra information about certain places. Now, um, they are from various theatres and there is um, a lot of um, playbills that aren't really associated with a theatre as well. So such as circuses, which would be pop up structures, um, not based in any particular theatre. Now, Lou mentioned that when you do your basic search on the Leodis homepage, it will automatically search all the playbills and photographs. And just as an example, um, I had a look to see what would happen if I tried to look for city varieties. And so this is the homepage search from Leodis, the quick search. If I wanted to photograph of the city varieties, I've got 735 results and nearly all of them are going to be playbills. So it's not ideal if you are wanting photographs of places to use a quick search that involves all the playbills. But what you can do, as Lou mentioned, if you choose playbills in the advanced search, all these theatres pop up, or you can search all theatres as well. And then that just gives you the option of separating the photograph and the playbill searches. So I'm going to show you a few um, examples of some of the playbills you can see on the website. 
This first one is the earliest dated one I could find. So there are quite a lot on there that don't have a year associated with it. So there may be earlier ones, but this is certainly the earliest dated one I could see. And this is from the 2nd of July, 1781, and its performance is at the theatre in Hunslet Lane. It was just called the theatre because there was only one theatre in Leeds at this time. Everyone knew where it was. And you'll see that it's got uh, a dissipation, uh, a comedy that was performing at Drury Lane, and then also a celebrated burlesque called Om Thumb. And this was uh, a theatre that was owned by Mr. Tate Wilkinson. He um, actually appeared in, I think, both, yes, both performances. So in Dissipation, he is Sir Andrew Acorn, and in Tom Thumb, he is Lord Grizzle. And on this playbill, it, it tells you the time the performance starts, but it doesn't tell you any ticket prices. I think it assumes that the people of Leeds would know this. So it says, is there available at the usual places and at Mr. Wilkinson's lodgings in Boar Lane? Now, um, I mentioned that some of them don't have years, but we can do some research around the ones that don't and have a look in our newspaper collection to see what we can find. So I did actually have a look in our newspapers and found an advertisement in 1781 for this very playbill. And as you'd expect, it's nearly word for word exactly the same, but certainly for ones that don't have years written on them, we can use other sources to try to work out how old they are. And just some final bit of information about this one. In the Dissipation Act, we have uh, Mr. Cummins, who was playing Charles Woodbine. Now, Mr. Cummins has a bit of an unfortunate history with this theatre because in 1817 he actually died on stage um, so he's very much associated with this theatre and there's a little bit more information about him and his death on our Secret Library Leeds blog. Now this next one concerns the Princess's Theatre. It's undated but um, a newspaper article I found suggests it's around 1862. And this is a very bizarre act. Um, it's a benefit night for John Garrett and Harry Thatcher. And the main act is Garrett in his wash tub being pulled by four geese. And this was actually taking place on the River Air. So outside of the theatre, you would all go and see the clown, Mr. Garrett, um, get in the River Air. And he was getting in at Victoria Bridge and he would land at Leeds Bridge. And he'd done this act before um, on various parts of the River Thames, as well as other locations, including by Brighton Pier. So this is an enlargement of, of Mr. Garrett in his wash tub and his four geese tethered along the Thames. This next playbill is um, one of my favourites. Again, it's undated, but we think it's 1854. And this is for Pablo Fank's Circus Royal, who are performing at Four Lane in what would have been a temporary circus structure. And Pablo Fank was the first black circus owner in the country, and his circus mainly featured horses. And the colour is really the first thing you notice about this. It's a very vivid yellow, but they are, there are an awful lot of images on this playbill as well. So each of the little squares around the edge of the playbill um, actually depict a different act using the horses. Now the main star of the show was Emily Jane Wells and she would leap through hoops and over flags while riding the horses, sometimes in full bloomer costume. Other acts you could see were General Tom Thumb, the wizard rider, the cord of tension and the flight through balloons. These ones don't have any images with them, so we're left to imagine what they actually look like. And Pablo Fank is actually buried in Leeds up at the university grounds, St George's Field. So his circus is very much associated with Leeds, and we have many of his circus playbills in our collection. Moving on, we're now in 1954, and this is one of the examples of our Empire Theatre playbills. 
And the Empire Theatre was based where Harvey Nichols is now on Brigate. I think you can still see the word empire on the back of the wall behind Harvey Nichols. So this one is from the 17th of May. The colour really jumps out at you on this one. And we've got the Big Star Parade with the main act being Harry Seacombe from The Goon Show and Leeds's very own Frankie Vaughan. We also have Janet Brown on the bill. And I don't know if you can see, but right at the very bottom, there's a new style comedian called Bruce Forsyth. So very, very lowly down <laughs> Bruce Forsyth before he really hits the big time. And to accompany this, we've got another one from October 1957, again at the Empire. And this is featuring a very young Shirley Bassey. She was only about 21 years old at this point, and she was fresh back from her successes in Las Vegas and Hollywood. And she'd only been performing for a few years at this point, and it was well before her, you know, big James Bond themes. Jimmy James is also on this um, bill as a comedian, and tucked away right was Roy Castle doing comedy impressions. Um, and I remember him from Record Breakers years ago. I think Castle and Jimmy James often work together at this point as well. And next we have the City Varieties from December 1958. And the City Varieties were well known at this time for their saucy strip show nights. And um, this is one of the tamer playbills called Naughty Nights and Saucy Sights, and has a variety of different acts on, including Exotic Gina, the showgirl of the Folly Bergere. You could also see comedy from Godfrey Wood, from Godfrey and Gray and Mandy and Sandy, one girl and her dog. What I love about this one is kind of the cross marketing. So on this Saucy Sites playbill, you also have an advert to the right for the Sooty Christmas show with Harry Corbett. So nice family entertainment finding its way onto the Saucy Sites playbill. This is for another circus, John Sanger and Sons. Uh, the Royal Circus, and um, this was from 1894. And they were one of the very big circuses at this point, and they did indeed play for royalty, including Queen Victoria. And they were visiting Leeds on Boxing Day, and they were playing on Camp Road. And again, it's full of colour and images, so you can see what acts you might witness. Uh, they had clowns, a hundred horses and ponies, a trained herd of elephants, as well as lions, tigers, kangaroos, cheetahs, leopards, and baboons. And here we can see a poor little baby elephant with glasses on at the piano, and a very scary looking clown, who you can see is part of the entertainment. Now, um, I'm just gonna move away from Playbill slightly, just to show you one of my favorite items in our collection. Um, you may have seen this image as part of our publicity for the launch of re, um, the relaunch of Leodis. And this is our bread archway photograph, and it dates from October 1894. And it was actually only put on Leodis last year, so it's quite a recent addition to the website. But we've known about this bread archway for years because we've got another item in stock. And this is from 1895, and it's a calendar that we have. And it was done by um, Mr. Morris to advertise his bakery. And Mr. Morris was the man who actually baked all the bread for the bread archway. And for those of you that don't know the story, the um, story behind the archway is the Duke and Duchess of York were visiting Leeds. They were coming to open some new buildings up at the Yorkshire College, which is now the University of Leeds. And they were going to ride in a carriage through the city centre. And so the people of Leeds really went all out decorating the various streets with flags and banners and bunting. And the man who owned the Mitre Hotel, which you might be able to see on the very left hand side of the image, he was a Henry Child. And together with Mr. Morris the Baker, they came up with this idea of building this archway out of bread. Now, we don't know whether the Duke and Duchess ever saw this. They weren't due to go down this road, so they might have been able to see from the edge of Brigate, 
Um, so we don't know whether it had the kind of desired effect of welcoming the royal couple. Uh, what we do know is the next day they dismantled it and they gave away the bread to the poor. Um, if you had a ticket, you could queue up to get a bit of bread from the archway. You were also given tea and uh, soup as well. Although by this point, the bread had been outside for quite a long time. It had rained a bit. I'd imagine the birds and the rats probably had a nice time with it. Certainly loads were stolen overnight. So I'm not sure exactly how nice it would have been to have some of that bread. Maybe as kind of a prestige thing to say you had, but um, it might not have been the, the tastiest of items. So that was just a whistle stop tour through the playbills that we have on Leodis. There are, as Lou mentioned, over 5,000 of them. So you can spend many a happy hour just browsing through and seeing what we actually have in our collection. So I will stop sharing now and I will hand back to Louise. Okay, thank you so much, Helen. That was brilliant. Um, I do need to say regarding our playbills, uh, Helen Wright mentioned that there were some less polite playbills. Um, we just need to say they do not reflect our current values and beliefs regarding equality. They have been digitized and kept for conservation and archive reasons. Um, but yes, there are some of them that we are not that proud of. So I'm going to tell you a couple of other bits and then I'm going to hand over to Josh to tell you the story of our um, comments. Now, the new, you've always been able to have a personal account on Leodis. Um, with the new Leodis, we've taken it a bit further. Um, at the top right of the home screen, you will see a sign in or sign up page. Once you click on this, your screen will change to reflect this um, and you will have a my account button and a view basket. Now, clicking on my account means that you'll be able to uh, view an album. So any favourite photographs you've got of Leodis, you can put them into your own personal album and revisit them time and time again. You can go to your details, which is where you can set up your own username. Uh, your username is what will appear when you leave comments on the websites. You can change this as often as you like, but it's in the my details section. You can also change your password there as well. Um, and you can also log out on this function. The my account bit for anyone who is still struggling to transfer their account from the old Leodis to the new one, we are here to offer uh, support with that. I can assure you that everybody's album is safe. Everyone's comments that they've previously made are safe. We've not lost anything. Um, there's a few people where during the transition of data, they've not found them on the new site, but we've can still access the old one and bring those over. So please don't worry if you've attempted to sign in and it hasn't let you, we can sort that out. Um, you will be asked to reconfirm your email, things like that. If it's taking time, I would suggest give it five minutes, make a cup of tea, come back and try again. If after 20 minutes of asking for a password reset on anything, email us and let us know or try it again first. But again, we're here to support you so we can do that. So one of the things I mentioned is that you can leave comments on any of our photographs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to let Josh tell you all about comments. Brilliant, thank you, Louise. I'm just gonna load up my PowerPoint. And I hope you can all see that. I assume you can. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to get started. So I'm Josh Flint. I'm going to talk about the history of Leeds and how that's represented in the, in the Leodis comments section. Um, so what is the Leodis comments section? So you can see on the right hand side that every single um, photograph has a description underneath. And then underneath that, you can leave your own personal comments. And that really brings a new social and community history to the website that wasn't there in the first place. Because you have to remember that the indexes, when they were re researching the photographs before they uploaded them onto Leodis, were focused on what they could see and research the streets, the roads, the dates, what everything was made out of and who possibly lived there. But the comments bring a unique social history. Who lived there? What these people were like? Why they had to move? How has the area changed in the past? 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and it allows users to have a voice on Leodis and Leodis is then capturing these comments, hopefully forever. 
Um, and so this section will focus on the importance of these comments and how, they, how it changes your perception of these photographs, these incredible photographs anyway. So I'm gonna start with the Palace Picture Hall on Ayres Avenue in Armley from 1970. So this photograph is actually owned by the West Yorkshire Archives. So this photograph here, if you wanted to look at it before Leodis, you'd have to travel to the West Yorkshire Archives to look at it. Strangely enough, if you wanted to look at the other side of the road on Ayres Avenue, those photographs were owned by Leeds Libraries. And so you'd have to go from the West Yorkshire Archives to Leeds Libraries to look at all these photographs to, to find out what was going on on that same street. The great thing about Leodis is that now all those photographs have been digitized and are placed on one easy to use website. Um, so this was the Palace Picture Hall on Ayres Avenue in Armley, 1970. It was first opened as a 800 seat stadium, uh, stadium cinema in August, 1912. And then it became the Armley Rink. Um, and then the Palace Picture Hall and Armley Rink closed in about 1964 and became the new Western Bingo and then was later demolished in the 1990s. But what I'm gonna show is a couple of really interesting comments about this photograph. So this first one here, says, I spent many happy hours both in the picture house and the rink in the 30s and 40s. I remember the soldiers being billeted in the in the rink after the Dunkirk evacuation. And I think it's really interesting because I've spoke to many colleagues and no one knew that soldiers were stationed in the in, in this in this place. And so it's that kind of social history and knowledge that Leotis can help us find out and keep forever. Um, and then I just love this comment on the right hand side, which is Vera Wright and I used, used to go rollering here in 1959 to 1960, and we were age 13. We were always given the worst skates and the black with, with the black rubber wheels almost worn down to nothing. We complained, but to no avail. Both of us were small and very skinny, and we got pushed around a lot by the older lads who, were, who used to practice jumps in the aisle. We were really good skaters, but didn't get a look in. I'll be 72 shortly and can still roller skate. How do I know? Well, I've had a go. And I love this idea that, well, I love two things about this comment. The first one is that this person has had a 60 year old grudge with the Armley rink because they kept on giving her the worst skates. And the second one is that she can still skate now, probably with much better skates. Uh, it's just a fantastic comment and it brings a new light to, the, uh, to, to, the, to this photograph. So our next photograph is the New York Street Ballroom. And this is from 1946. Um, so the views, this is a view of Westminster buildings at the corner of Harper Street in the city centre. And but what we're going to focus on is just here, which is the first floor, and it was called the 101 Dance Club. Um, and there's so many great comments about this dance club, starting from this first one, which is my mother Irene met my father Arthur at the 101 Dance Club in 1948, so about two years after this photograph was taken. Um, this second one, which I just think is hilarious, um, is that in the early 50s, my pals and I would go dancing on a Saturday afternoon because there'd be no doorman. On Saturday night, there was always a chucker out. I love that phrase, chucker out. Um, in the late 50s, it used to be Big, Jam, Big Jim Moran, an Xbox, a wrestler, and no one ever argued with him. And I bet you can guess why. Um, and then this final one I'm going to talk about, which is my mother Mary was told to stop jitterbugging at the 101, and she went on to marry the man who told her my father Arthur, who was employed there. Um, I just love the fact that she was jitterbugging on the wrong day, and so she was told off for it, um, which is great. And then we come to this, which is just a fantastic photograph of Jane Mansfield outside of Armley Jail in April 1967. So Jane Mansfield was a variety performer, an Australian variety performer in the 1960s, 1950s, and she came over to the UK and caused a right stir because what she tried to do was smuggle in two small dogs underneath her fur coat and she was stopped by the police by the police at the airport um, and interrogated about these two dogs which weren't allowed in the country um, and the comments really reflect Jane's kind of dynamic personality and this first one was I was a member of the Halifax pop group Dino and the Travelers Dino and the Travelers not entirely sure um, who appeared with Jane Mansfield in a Sunday afternoon concert for the prison inmates in on the, on the 30th of April 1967. The concert was held in the prison chapel. Jane had made news trying to smuggle two small dogs into the country in her fur coat, which is hilarious. She caused an uproar by asking the prisoners, would you like to see my two hours? Which, you know, again, just is, if you, 
the picture and the comments go so well together. And then just this last comment saying, I remember doing part-time work for, the, for a Lee's photographer and had the pleasure of taking a backstage picture of Jane. She was very nice. However, her little dog was a right pain. And I, I love the fact that, again, this kind of mega star was lovely, but her dogs were a right pain. And it's, it's only from the Leodis comment section that you get this kind of real humor as well, which is great. And then I'm going to come to this, which is I'm kind of fascinated by these two photographs for many reasons. Um, and it's a bus crash in Sheepskull Beck on the 21st of January 1956. Um, and as you can see, the bus has crashed into the Beck and it's just a it's it's just a ridiculous uh, photograph, I must admit. And the photograph and, and the comments really represent how much how strange this was and how much it was almost became an event. I'm going to preface this by saying that no one was seriously hurt in this crash. Um, so we can kind of, you know, talk about it. Um, and so the first comment says, I was a 12 year old boy, at the, I was 12 years old at the time of the, this accident happening and living in Evelyn Street, just off Sheepscar. I went down with my brother to watch the workmen lift the bus out of the beck. And this other comment kind of is on the same vein saying, I remember going to watch them lift this bus out of the beck. I cycled down the green road from Beckett Street and it all seemed very exciting to a little boy. And you can even see the people kind of looking and seeing what actually happened. Um, on this left-hand side photograph. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a really interesting couple of photographs. And I always really like to look at the adverts as well. This first one for the Daily Mirror. Um, and this second one, which I love, which is from Stork. And it says, bread loves Stork margarine. So whenever I put these photographs on social media, I always try and tag the Daily Mirror and Stork. And I haven't got a response yet. I'm hoping at some point I will do, uh, if, I keep, if, I, if I keep on trying. School photographs are always really great because the comments are hilarious. Uh, some of them are saying how much they loved the school and how much they hated the school and how much pe teachers were really great or really horrible. Um, but this one from St. Stephen's School on Accommodation Row from Berman in 1960 has some really great comments about one teacher in, protect in particular, uh, Mr. Broster. And this first one says, I was at St. Stephen's from 1962 to 1964. Mr. Broster was my teacher, a scary, gentle giant, as I remember. The memory that sticks in my mind most was a young boy who impaled his arm on the railings of the school. And I was told by a teacher, I was told, told by one of the teachers to keep hold of his arm while she got help. And I think we can all imagine the absolute, absolute terror on that teacher's face as she panicked and didn't know what to do. Um, and then this second comment saying that I went to Evil Gardens from 1974 to 1978. Mr. Broster was pure class, the proof of how many people still remember and speak so highly of him. Um, I can still see him setting up, setting up the goalposts on the green for MPE. He was one of the best. And I think it shows that even, you know, this teacher must have retired 10, 20, 30, possibly even 40 years ago. And Leodis is allowing this teacher to still be remembered and talked about so fondly by his students. And I think that's so lovely. And you only really get that on things like Leodis. And then we're gonna to come to my final image, which is, um, and it's, it's, it's probably one of my favorite ones on the whole of the Leodis website. It's from the Majestic Dance Hall from 1933. Um, and there's so many great comments on this photo, for this photograph, which is about, you know, oh, I met my husband there, or I met my, I had some great times there. But the reason why I really like this photograph is because I was invited to go to an event and it was for people who had dementia and their families. And uh, so I took a couple of iPads and I wanted to show them some Leodis photographs. And I came across this husband and wife and I'd noticed during the event that the husband hadn't really mentioned too much, but his wife was, uh, so I decided to go and talk to his wife. Um, and she said that they met at the Majestic Dance Hall in the 1950s. And so I found this photograph of the Majestic Dance Hall. And as soon as the husband saw this photograph, something clicked and he just became almost a different person. He started talking about how him and his mates used to go to the dance hall every Friday and Saturday night, how he met his wife there, how he met other girls there, which is why I kind of gave him a, a bit of a stern look about. Um, and it just kind of, it, he just kept talking about all the great times that he had at this majestic dance hall. And I think it just shows the power of these photographs. Um, after the event, his wife kind of came up to me and said, you know, thank you so much for showing him this photograph because that's the most he's, she's got him to talk about anything in so long. And I feel like, again, it just shows the power 
the, this and the social importance that these photographs have both online on Leodis and creating discussions in, in uh, between people as well um but yeah absolute great story and it shows the power of these photographs and that's about it really so if anyone's got any questions and make sure you put them in the chat i tried so hard to try and find a picture of kids with their hands up uh, and i couldn't find one anywhere so i chose this one because i've never seen a picture where every single one of these kids looks as if they're up to no good and it's absolutely fantastic <laughs> um so yeah so thank you all very much and yeah. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for that josh i mean it was brilliant and like josh said if you could start putting your questions and answers sorry your questions into the q a box we will start going through them um i am just going to mention a couple of other things while we wait for people to fill that up but just as josh was saying about the comments and the value of the comments i know i had to do an exhibition a few years ago and it was two Leodis photographs that really sparked it off for me and they were of the J Roberts factory in Armley um, which was a factory that dealt with asbestos and it is a horrific period for Leeds and there was no way I could have portrayed what happened there because those pictures just list what the factory is, list that it made asbestos, list that there was serious ramifications for decades after that on people's health but in the comments underneath you got people's stories people talking about how they went to the school next door and it would snow in the middle of summer and the teachers would bring them inside people who had lost who were perfectly healthy themselves but had lost large numbers of their family because they lived so close to this factory and that's one of the things backs up sort of what josh was saying about the social importance of this website i don't know where else there is that those people would have been able to give voice to the feelings they were having and being able to put out there what an effect this the growing up in this part of Leeds had for them so comments there are hugely important and it's one of the amazing things about Leodis and the fact that we had it built for us by the Leeds City Council IT people um, and it's why it took us so long to replace it we did look at off-the-shelf archive systems for photographs but none of them were able to support the huge number of comments that we've got and there was just absolutely no way we were willing to lose those so i'm just going to mention a couple of other things and then we will start going through the questions um at the beginning i did talk about how the new leodis website has had to be built within certain security and data protection restrictions and um, one of the things we've unfortunately lost from the site is that previously if you left a comment you could leave your email address there and people were able to email you directly or get in touch and this did, has helped a lot of people find old friends find long lost family and that kind of thing um, However, we are now working within the UK data protection laws and we just, as a local authority, we cannot have that many email addresses just there on our website available for any web scraping software to take with them. Um, so that is why we do ask you to log in and create a username. Now, anyone who has a history of putting comments on Leodis will, if you didn't already have a username set up, you will have been allocated a new generic one in the move over. If you log into your account and set up a username, and as long as it's not an email address, it can be anything you want. It can be your name, it can be a made up name, whatever you choose. All of your old email, all of your old comments will be updated with that new username. So over time, as more people log in, um, it will be that you know the comment sections will start to make more sense again rather than just these generic Leodis 4579 um, names. Um, and another final thing, I'm assuming that because all of you have attended this talk, that you're all Leodis users. Um, we just want to say a massive thank you to all of you because have you not been such prolific users of the website, had it not been so popular, we would never have got this rebuild. It was I just everyone in the council loves it, everyone who's worked on it loves it, and I just don't think there's anyone in the council who wanted to be the person to say, we're going to turn it off nobody wanted to have to do that so we were able to get the rebuild that means we are security compliant and that the website is no longer about to 
fall off a cliff. It's actually going to carry on living. It's uh, 21 years old. I think there are, may actually be some people in today's audience who actually worked on the original site back in the 1990s. Very much appreciate all of you. And yeah, thank you so much. If you've got any other questions regarding the Odyssey that you think of after this, on the site in the help and information section, there is a how to use the website function. There's also on our, if you visit our blog, The Secret Library Leads, there is a huge post on there going through all the functions, more detail than I've talked about today. You can use that to find out anything else. And there's also, we have an Instagram account now. So for any of you Instagram users, because obviously we have a lot of photographs, so we'll never have a problem filling that. Um, our Instagram handle is at Leodis by Leeds Libraries. So if you look us up there, and I think we worked it out that with over 60,000 images, if we posted just one a day, we've got enough to do 170 years worth of social media. So yeah. So I'm going to have a chat with Helen now and ask, do we have any questions? I know you've been answering some as we go along, but if you, I'm sure there's some people who haven't looked, if you want to. Yes, I'll just mention a couple that I've already um, answered. Uh, a couple about the bread archway, someone asking at the top of the archway, there was a G and an M um, written at the top. Now the Duke and Duchess of York were actually, um, well, would go on to become King George V and Queen Mary. So the G and the M was for George and Mary. And someone else mentioning whether the bread would really support the weight of the archway. Well, I gave you a very brief um, overview of it, but there was actually an architect involved and there was a wooden and iron frame. So it was very carefully thought about how you could get this bread to stay there. Um, but we do have uh, new questions. Um, so um, probably for you, Louise, do you clear copyright on the images before adding them to Leodis? Um, well, as I said, there's over 67,000 on there. I think 30 odd thousand belong to Leeds Libraries. So there are copyright, that's fine. Uh, those ones we can sell to people and we can clear for reproduction rights for film crews, newspapers, books. If you look on each, um, every entry, it will say which collection it belongs to. If it says something like West Yorkshire Archives, it belongs to them. They've given us the rights to show it on the website, but we do not have the right to just automatically do whatever we want with that. So if someone wants to buy it, someone wants it for copyright, that kind of thing, it's still worth getting in touch with us, but uh, we do have a few more things to jump through. If, um, I mean, we're talking to people now, about adding new collections to the site and one of the things we say is if you don't want to give up copyright that's absolutely fine you can we will just use Leodis as a hosting site for that um I don't think I think we've looked at it and we've reviewed charges and everything I don't think that I would consider us to be massively overpriced or anything I think if anything you could consider yourself to be getting a bargain all of that money goes back into the Leeds Library Service and to support Leodis um I think that's about everything on copyright. Oh, one final thing. If you want to use a Leodis image for something, if it's social media related, like you want to put it on Twitter and go, I found this great image or Instagram or Facebook, that's fine as long as you reference us. Please put that it is from leodis.net at Leeds Libraries. If you put it on social media, tag us in as well, either our Instagram account or if it's one of the other platforms, tag in at Leeds Libraries because we'd love to see where we end up. Um, feel free to email them to a friend if you're going to show them that. But if you're going to include them in anything, like you're wanting to do a calendar for something that you're going to sell, if you want to put them in a book or a newsletter, please do get in touch with us because we do have a process that, of paperwork that we have to go through to administer that. Okay. Um, we had a question about the contributors' names no longer being shown, but I think you dealt with that yeah. in your final part. Someone yes. else has asked, is there any way to message people through the site? Um, I know it's not really designed for that, but they've mm. seen comments and photos that are about their yeah. ancestors and it'd be nice to discuss more. Um, I know it's, it's one of the unfortunate things because we have to lose email addresses, but I have to say we are an archive, a photographic archive site. That is our priority. Um, and also being able to gather people's comments it would be a completely different business model for it to become sort of a Friends Reunited site. And there are websites out there that do that. 
we're a library service, we're archiving photographs and we're making them accessible for you. It's not what we do. So I am I know how disappointing that is for a lot of people to have lost that function. But with the current UK data protection laws and information restrictions, it's one of the things that we have to do. Um, question that either maybe Lou or Anthony, um, you mentioned a blog. Can you tell us more about it, please? I'll let Anthony do that one as it's his at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a history and heritage, well, collections blog called the Secret Library Leads, um, www.secretlibraryleads.net. Uh, where we post regular uh, articles and material based on our library collections, not exclusively local history, but um, it's ended up being a lot of it being local history related. And just the other week, uh, Louise wrote a fantastic, very informative, quite in-depth overview of the new Leodis site and all the different features and kind of takes you through step by step what you can find on there and how to use it. So if you've not already seen that, that is a really good place to go to to get not only information about Leodis, but about our collections more generally. Um, yes, it's secretlibraryleads.net, but just email us if you uh, need the email address again. Okay, um, we have a question. Do you have photographs of Black Leeds people? And do you have a way that we can give you the photographs and discuss who and what is going on? Yeah. Um... At the moment, we are working mostly with historic collections, things that were taken by the city engineers, the people who tore down parts of the city and rebuilt them. We do have huge gaps in our local and family history collections when it comes to different people and different communities in Leeds. Leo, this is a brilliant way of um, answering those gaps. I would say if you're just talking like you've got one picture, then we tend to not do open calls for photographs because we would be absolutely inundated and we just don't have the staff to process those. If you've got a large collection of images, yes, we're definitely interested. Um, our email address is localandfamilyhistory at leeds.gov.uk. Um, I'll put that as a, an answer to your question. If you want to email us to start that conversation, we're more than happy to do that. All that we say is at the moment, we hold off when it comes to children. So obviously the picture right behind this is a black and white image of a lot of children, but I can guarantee you all of those children are a lot older than that, definitely adults by now. So the information we always want, we need to know a location, it doesn't have to be down to the street, as long as it's sort of a, this is Hare Hills, this is Morley, this is Chapel Town, that's what I mean by location. Uh, ideally a date, a year, if nothing else, and an idea of what is going on in the photograph. If anyone does have large collections of photos at home and you're not sure whether to send them in, there's no harm in asking. Um, so yes, absolutely. We're definitely open to more photographs and continuing it. So yeah, I'll put the, I'll answer your question with our email address so you can get in touch. Okay. Um, we have a question saying the Yorkshire Evening Post have a huge collection of old photographs of Leeds. Are there any plans to obtain some of their images for the website? Well, we've got some of them already. If you go to the advanced search function and look under collections, we do have some of the Yorkshire Evening Post photographs and they've been really helpful sending us some of lockdown leads over the last few months. So we'll be able to add them. Um, we work with Andrew Hutchinson, a reporter who does all the retro leads pages. Um, if anyone follows them, they have a huge following on face on their Facebook page. And we help Andrew by supplying him with some of our photographs because I don't think a lot of the YUP's collection is digitized. Um, I don't think people realize what an enormous undertaking it is to digitize photographs. It's one of, it's one of the reasons why that photo of the bread arch only went on last year it will have been in a stack somewhere. And when you've got a stack of 400 photos and you're scanning through them, you don't have the time to research every one to then decide which ones get priority. You're literally just working through them, researching bundles in an area as you go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a huge undertaking, a digitization project. It's a very, a very manual process, so yeah. Um, someone else has asked, do other cities have a similar site or is Leeds the first? Um, I don't know if we were the first, but going back, I think we're probably one of, I think we must be one of the longest lasting. Um, 
there. Uh, I know that like Norwich have a very good one, Nottingham have a good one. There is one called Twixt Air and Calder, um, which are also photographs from around this region. Um, I think what makes us very unique is that we're one of the only sites that have been built by our own IT department. And that means that we have been able to have exactly what we want. It's not a, it's not an off the shelf uh, package that you just buy and then load your pictures up to. Those are available. Ours was very much me sitting with a lot of IT people going, no, no, I need, I need a button for this. And I'm going, why? And you're going, because people will shout at me if there isn't one, they will use it a lot. So it was very much a process of what are the most used functions on this site and how do we make sure we don't lose them? So yeah. All right, I can't see any other questions. We're getting some thanks. Thanks for sharing everything. Amazing guys, um, fascinating, many thanks. Um, and we have run over by 15 minutes already. So um, well, maybe um, Lou, do you want to just say any closing remarks before um, we finish? No, I think, uh, I think that's pretty, oh, the only thing, um, having a minor problem in processing orders at the moment um it all worked right up until the moment we hit the go live button and then our website stopped talking to the payment website so if you want to buy a photo at the moment you cannot do it online but you can email us with if you look at what the order form involves like choosing sizes the sort of finish you want you can email that to us and we'll get in touch and we will take your payment over the phone so that you know you can still get an image we are still sending them out to print we are still getting them to people please don't be put off by the fact that if you click to try and buy an image it just says sorry we're not working right now it they're working on it they're trying to find a solution so yeah and i think that's it yeah there's no more questions just lots of um, thank yous <laughs> I'm just okay. very quickly typing in our email address. I, I'll end the recording now then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.